What's going on, guys? And welcome back to yet another episode of Door Kickers 2 Task Force North, where we've been applying realistic and authentic real-world military tactics and close-quarters battle doctrine to this game. This game is called Door Kickers 2 Task Force North. It is available for purchase over on my game store at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. And this game has been a delight for the many years, I say many years, year and a half, two years at this point that I have been playing it, and it is inching towards a full version 1.0 release. And just yesterday, we received an update called the Intermediary Update, which serves as a stepping stone, inching us closer to that full release. And in the Intermediary Update, there's some pretty cool content. We get some ability to sync the movements of our players to a specific speed, and we also now see that this campaign button has appeared on the launch page. So a campaign sort of mechanic is imminent at this point and is expected to be included with the full release of the game. We've also got some updates to the Noaraki SWAT units. They've got some new weapons available to them. Interestingly, you can now also man Dishkas as Blue Force. So if you clear a Dishka fighting position on the battlefield, you will also be able to man that position and use it against the enemy. There's five new maps, I think, available in this update, and they appeared under the Tiny Troubles. Yep, six of nine now on Tiny Troubles. Uh, and then there's a few others scattered about as well. Looks like I might have one in Deck of Cards. Um, never see, never be. Yeah, so let's take a look at Tiny Troubles. These have been some of my favorites because they are small enough that you can get through them in a quick playthrough, but very technical and very challenging. So we've got Island Strike, which is an abduction, Fuel Stop, which is a bomb defusal, and a Ritual, which is a stop execution. So hostage rescue. I'm going to start with Island Strike. It's a typical HVT or high value target or individual capture scenario. We can take four assaulters to it. And this is the first time that I have opened up door kickers in quite some time. Well, I take that back. I did play some co-op last week with some homies, um, but I have not really invested a ton of time in it as of late because I've been waiting for the same update as you guys have as well. And if we take a look at this one, I can bring four assaulters Looks like I can put two down here, but they've got to be mobile. That's kind of interesting because it looks like they're kind of swimming up to the dock and expected to then move quickly. So they're applying that mobility penalty to those spawning there. That means they're not coming in with as much armor or gear. Um, my assumption is that is like a, a simulated effect based off their infiltration by ground. Here I see an HVT escape route. So this high value individual, as we become compromised, is going to attempt to get his... Uh, exfil out this direction and then we're kind of forced into a frankly terrifying and canalizing spot over here what i'm going to do is go ahead and clear the deck we'll do some terrain analysis some mission analysis and some intelligence preparation of the battlefield on this assault before we go live uh, and after that we'll decide who we're bringing what they're bringing before going into execution and then watching it all come together in a spicy replay at the very end so looking up top Interesting to see this chalk outline up front. That means we've looks like we've arrived on this boat and then immediately killed one enemy. He's got an AK lane on the ground right there, I think. And then um, we've got a gate right here. It's a sheet metal gate that cannot be seen through. It can potentially be fired through. We can either go wall breach, mechanical breach, ballistic breach there. And then we are once again canalized into this, uh, this primary position. If we take a look inside, that is a locked door here. So we've got two locked doors up front. This is clearly a well-protected, well-barricaded unit. If we open up the information panel over here, we get a little briefing that provides a little bit more context uh, so that we can better understand the environment we're going into. So we hitched a ride on a Navy rivering craft to hit an insurgent meeting taking place at King's Checkers, a secluded island cafe. Okay, that's kind of good to know. Island Cafe to me implies that there could be civilians on the battlefield. They probably think rocks and water keep them safe, but they'll learn wet feet don't scare our boys. Secure and extract the two HVT, so we're looking for two high-value targets. The cafe is a small structure with both outdoor and indoor spaces, and we believe our target is uh, our targets are conferring behind locked doors. Makes sense. And that means I'm kind of, I hear, I read that, you know, our targets are conferring behind locked doors. Um, everything is locked. So we got lock, 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 lock. And I'm thinking like, where would an HVI meeting take place? Uh, we'll get there in a second. The targets brought their own security to the location and more is on standby as a QRF plan accordingly and do not let them escape. Okay. If a QRF does arrive, I mean, really their only options uh, are going to be to come down that same avenue that we came down or come down over here. Um, 
this creates some challenges, especially because I can only bring four assaulters to the fight. I'm not, I'm, I'm just looking at the geometry of the space here. And like my initial inclination is like set up a blocking position here to interdict the HVI should he try to squirt out of the compound and get to this exfil at the sheet metal gate here in the south. So that's like my first inclination. I want a blocking position here and then I want to lead with a heavy assault up here. Um, the challenge there is that if I have a blocking position here, that blocking position is going to have to tuck into cover and really only be able to like observe this area. Um, and if a QRF element does approach from the water, that blocking position is going to be exposed from the rear. And that leaves me deeply concerned. Um, my other option, of course, is to heavy stack up top and go rapid uh, this way. That's extremely dangerous. and It would force a very dynamic style of clearance that makes me uncomfortable in a non-hostage rescue scenario. Because in this case, the only lives on the line really are my assaulters um, and then any civilians that may be in the cafe. Uh, and so for that reason, I'm thinking like... I don't know that it is worth it to try a dynamic style of clearance, which exposes my force to a lot of risk when I could incur a little bit of extra risk, hang out a blocking position over here and work it that way. So we'll, we'll kind of get there in a second. If we take a look inside, we already talked about this locked door into kind of like a kitchen space area here, thinking that this is a cafe. Um, looks like kitchen here, what's supposed to be cafe storage here, serving area out here. Uh, but interestingly, this little storage area might have some weapons. Is that like, yep, that is indeed a weapon rack right there. And I'm seeing other supplies here. There might be magazines, gun crates, something like that. And there's another equipment box right here that could have additional heavy weapons in it. Over here, we've got like an SVD or dragon off and a shoulder fired. So <laughs> these guys are armed for bear. There's no intel about like a suicide bomber that could be here. But of course, we've seen plenty of suicide bombers and door kickers too before. And it's absolutely possible that there could be suicide bombers here. That's one more reason where I don't want to go necessarily charging in and, uh, and run into trouble. Over here, there's a, a man pad outside in a crew served or at least an LMG right next to it. So heavy weapons outside as well. That is concerning. If we begin executing and I see this stuff disappearing, then I know that we've got guys with heavy weapons potentially coming around the outside or working this angle here. So that is problematic. Um, big open danger area here. You know, I, I think it's likely that if an HVI meeting is taking place, um, they may be in this space. I think they're equally likely to be back here where they'll have privacy from their guards and they would instead leave guards in this area, in this area, uh, and certainly outside and vicinity of those heavy weapons to protect them so that they could meet in private. I think that's probably the most likely scenario. So if that's, you know, how we think the enemy is going to be arrayed, you know, I'm thinking HVIs either in here or in here or in here. As soon as they're alerted, I expect their security elements to move to and engage us, try to fix us in position, enabling those HVIs to squirt out of the target and move to exfil um, like that. So that is that is a problem, clearly. Um, so how do we go about actually assaulting this compound, accomplishing our mission, preserving the lives of our four assaulters, and moving to our own exfil, which is back up here at this boat? I do think that to reduce the risk to the mission, I am forced to use this blocking position. I will put at least one, potentially two, uh, mobile-capable assaulters at this blocking position. That's a challenge because they're not going to bring as much equipment, they're not going to have as much armor, um, but it's something that I think is necessary to prevent the HVIs from squirting to that exfil location. That means I'm going to take either two or three assaulters up here. I'm going to attempt to stay silent early. Looks like we've already killed one. Hopefully that means the alarm has not yet been raised and we're going to prevent the alarm from being raised as long as possible. Uh, I'm going to push with those two to do a silent breach, if able, of this door. We'll try to, I don't know if I can pick locks anymore with rangers. In fact, I don't think that you can. I got cameras, explosives. See, this is the problem. We're going to have to go loud early. Um, and, and that is not easy. So that's going to have to be an explosive or a ballistic breach up top, um, which creates <laughs> significant challenges, to say the least. Yeah, explosive, ballistic, or mechanical up top. Move the assaulters down this alleyway. This is just one awful, we can treat it like a hallway. We can treat it like a fatal funnel. Extremely dangerous. Keep guns on the door. Once again, go violent through here. Open it up with explosives um, or with ballistics and then work it from outside. At this point, I think we're going to be compromised. I expect those squirters to trigger an attempt to get to this exfil point. If that happens, our um, dudes over here will interdict them. 
We'll continue deliberate clearance to the south. I think we don't we won't get much further than here or here before we trigger that QRF. I think the QRF's most likely avenue of approach is honestly the most likely avenue of approach is probably this. Cuz if the HVI is squirting this direction to Xville, I think he's running, you know, clearly to somewhere that's safe, but also somewhere where he's going to be supported by other elements. So I almost expect the QRF's most likely avenue of approach to be here. What that means to me is I probably have to have two uh, assaulters over here in this blocking position, which further restricts my manpower. So this one is getting complicated quickly. Um, yeah. So again, security elements fighting here. Our clearance generally move in this direction. HVI is going to squirt this way. We will interdict him here, defeat our QRF here, pull rear security up here, complete a deliberate clearance of this compound once we have our HVI, because if I scoop up the HVI down here, I still have to clear through the rest of this damn compound to get him back to our exfil up top. And I suspect that that will result in me at that point having actually cleared all of the enemy off of this objective. So this one is going to be a challenging one uh, for sure, but it is one that I think we can handle. And now's the hard part. Who do we bring and what do we bring them with? Um, I'm going to put Drummer as the lead assaulter okay. up top. I'm going to put Philly as the lead yeah, assaulter do down bottom, but I have to get him to a mobility level that is sufficient. Yeah, so he's going to have a mobility of eight. Right now his mobility is whatever that is, three, six, seven. So I've got to increase his mobility a little bit. I think I'm going to do that by swapping his sappies for if I go to level fours what does that do so he's got e sappies right now going to level threes all around actually helps his front armor hurts everything else going to a ranger vest doesn't help Go into a Ranger Vest Sappy combo. These are level three plates. They're going to help with pistol cartridges. They're not going to do much for rifle cartridges. That gets us up to the required eight mobility points. I'm going to leave him with this Mark 18. Um, EOTech can. And does he have Sauced Ball on here? At these ranges, I mean... Yeah, it looks like just looking at the stats here that EPR um, is going to be our round of choice. And it's not a hostage rescue, so I'm not as worried about overpenetration, although the geometry is going to get complex whenever we start shooting towards each other. We're going to leave his helmet as is. Bangs, frags, I'm happy with. Um, and then instead of this breaching shotgun, I think I'm going to give him some slap charges, and I'm happy with that. All right, so let's get Philly into position. Okay. All right, so our four assaulters are set. Up top, we're bringing Minnow with a Mark 18. He's got bangs, frags, and a breaching hammer with a Glock, a helmet, and uh, all-around protection that is level three from the extended vest and sappy. Those are level three armor plates. It's not going to do a ton for rifle rounds at close range, but it is going to provide better all-around protection. Um, and then I've got the all-around e-sappies for drummer with the Mark 18 suppress. He's got a Gucci Glock, which is a fragmented mod. And uh, I don't plan to remove that anytime soon because it looks so cool. Next gen helmet, bangs, frags, and slap charges. Down on the bottom, I've got JR and Philly with similar builds. The dis difference between the two of them is I've got smoke with JR and I have breaching uh, charges with our boy Philly. Let's go ahead and get started. The general plan is to establish a battle position right here oriented in this direction and in this direction to protect against a QRF that's likely coming from right there or potentially from right there. Do our deliberate assault this way with our two primary assaulters to flush the HVT out. When he squirts, we will interdict him somewhere over in this vicinity. And uh, I expect a QRF to arrive. It's either going to come from this direction, this direction, or this direction. And when that happens, we're going to cry about it and it may not go our way, but we'll do our damn best. It's been a while, folks. Let's get after it here. We're still quiet right now. Everyone has silence initiated. I'm going to get my battle position set first. Once that is complete, we will get everyone else into position. So first thing, JR is going to come over here. He will be locked down on this door as he move. Uh, and he'll end up being right there. That'll be his cone of fire. We'll take our boy Philly. He will move right here. His cone of fire will end up being long. We may get compromised on this initial push. I hope that that is not the case. These boys will go ahead and stack. The goal is going to be to get through here as quiet as possible. One pulling front, one pulling rear. Let's move. So far, we're peeking through this window. Nothing yet. Everything looks clear to the rear. 
everyone is now in position. I'm going to give our boy Philly just a little bit more of a peek, and I'm going to open up his cone of fire just enough that he can see that door. Now i got to start thinking actions on contact because when this QRF does trigger, if they come piling through this door, one gun on it is not going to be enough. So the plan is going to be to suppress with one, break contact just around to this piece of cover on the edge of this building, get a frag over the top of him, and hopefully our boy Philly is able to hold it down and, uh, and make that happen for us. But we shall see. Up top, now the battle position is set, I'm going to fix this peak. He can see pretty good. He's got a little bit of dead space right around that corner, but that is all okay. And up top, we're going to go to work with our homies. I think I am going to attempt... Uh, I'm going to go loud here. I'm going to set a, a slap charge and just do it that way. So slap charge set. While this guy is setting a breach, we have another dude pulled security for him on the door because the breach man should never be left unsecured. So we're going to drop security to the rear momentarily to put a charge on the door. Charge is now set. And we are in contact in the south. So um, we're shooting, but it is suppressed. They may hear it. They may not. We will see how it goes. That is my indication that we do need to hustle up or get some standoff from this slap charge. And they can do that on the double. They're here! Yep, that means we are compromised. Charge is set. We'll put a bang in right behind that charge. Go ahead and unpause. Charge is going out, or excuse me, bang's going out. Breach is open. As that detonates, we're gonna pie here. Again, we are being deliberate with this clearance despite it being absolutely a violent and hard clear. There we go. So that's the pie. Creep on up, maintain cross coverage as we do it. If I can select my boy Minnow. There we go. Looks clear up to that point. We're going to run up to set this next charge. Right here. There we go. Set the charge right there. Maintain security for our breacher once again. I'm also now worried about getting pushed from the rear. Door still, doors open, transitioning from that walk, or excuse me, from the run back to the walk, getting dunk guns on the door, expecting contact, opening up fields of fire. Breach is open, no requirement now for that charge, obviously, but we are gonna hold this breach momentarily. We've got a good angle deep. We will bang from right here. This man has SA because he has been firing into that breach, so he is going to do the pie. Next threat area is going to be this door and this door. Down south, everything still appears to be under control for the time being, but we are certainly hard compromised at this point. Pie looks good. I have another open door. I'm going to drop rear security momentarily to do this next assault. We're going to strong wall the right wall basically run the rabbit right here, not doctrinal, but I'm concerned about this open space. I'm not gonna cut straight into the center of this room for that reason. We have a heavy troop right there. He's gotta die right away. I'm not concerned about this breach and this breach. All right, that looks good. I think we've cleared most of that short room. I'm going to pie from outside right here. This is a risky move. There's a giant open space, and now I've also got a challenge across the way. So I'm going to actually do this number to see if I can clear out the rest of that dead space. That room is now clear, and it is short. We'll restack on this door, maintain security on it. See if we can work a better pie here. Provide our shooter some space. I've got one more true believer coming around the corner. That is a shot for Philly. And he had an S vest on. So there are no doubt people willing to die out here. That is a lucky break that we had. I'm also going to disable the, um, the silent clear mode. So now we are engaging at will. 
everything's looking good. These guys, he's 16 of 30, 24 of 30. We're going to reload this magazine. And then prep this next room with a bang. Before I do that, though, now that we do have friendlies working towards this room, we're going to pie a little bit from outside as well. We always try to clear as much of these spaces as possible before actually going into it. And I have the ability now to do that with one of my guys external. This is extremely difficult to do in real life. Uh, certainly ideal to do in real life, but challenging because comms are difficult in these kinds of fights, certainly in close range, and uh, and you'd have to de-conflict this clearance because you don't want to be stepping in front of this window when you've got a guy holding a corner outside, and all of a sudden he sees a silhouette moving through this window and wants to take a shot at it because he just you know had to kill four people at close range. Got eyes back on this metal gate. His sector of fire still covering that corner, so we're healthy there. Stepping in front of this door is extremely dangerous, but it is reinforced and it is locked. So I'm willing to accept that risk to get this nice angle. We've got yet another, there's our HVT. So that's now our primary mission. We're gonna need to keep our eye on him as he tries to squirt towards this exfil over here. Yep, this is a problem. All right, so what do I see in here? I see um, one, two, three, four heavy troops, no HVT. So what I'm going to do is actually toss a frag in here and duck my homie back out of the way behind cover. Frag's going out. Both of our HVTs are accounted for now, so I can blow the hell out of this place. I don't have to worry about it. My two guys that need to stay alive are right here. They are unable to exfil because we have a blocking position for pre preventing them from doing that. So they are contained as intended in the target. We have a shooter here, a shooter here. Did we get injured? We did not. Everyone is still looking healthy. I'm going to examine the effects from that frag very slowly here. We still have one, two that are suppressed. And we have one squirter coming around the corner of this compound now. All right, we're going to hold this angle. That trade was uh, unfortunate. Our homie here is injured, but he is doing okay. But he is going to hold this area for now, allowing our next group of guys to get in and set up. We are going to have them in cover as soon as they are established. That allowed me to put two guys uh, back on this position. I'm also now thinking, where the hell is this QRF coming from? And if it is approaching from the rear, I'm going to have some problems here in a second. I made a, a heck of an assumption uh, that that was not the case. One more shooter. That's a heavy troop. We should have a shot here. We do indeed. We've got good rear security up top. All right, now I have both of these guys in position. I'm going to drop JR to right here. He's going to provide our rear security and early warning if that QRF comes from the top. I'm going to reposition this field of fire so this QRF doesn't surprise me. And we are going to continue our deliberate clearance, knowing now that we have to be careful what we do with frags in this area because we've got two now unaccounted for HVIs. We also know there's suicide bombers in this target, so that is of equal importance. We're going to work this long angle. Both of these guys are going to be holding this corner. Rear security is set, top and bottom. I think that was our HVI. It is. That's our other HVI shooter with an HVI between us and him. That's a no-shoot situation, so I'm actually going to sprint out of the way because I don't want to kill an HVI and fail the mission right there. I'm going to get a bang around this corner to give us... The advantage, there's our shooter. We have a better angle now. Notice that I deliberately banged with the guy that was in the rear to make sure my lead shooter had an opportunity to take that shot. Real world, are you going to take a shot at a sh uh, you know a shoot target in that situation? Yes, 100%. Every single time you're going to take that shot. Uh, in this game, it's mission failure criteria if you, you know end up killing one of your HVIs. Uh, so I avoided that and made the decision to back off and give myself a, a second opportunity. That would have been superior. There's one of our HVIs there. Second bad guy. We've got yet another bad dude over here. I am once again going to move my shooters out of the way. 
and look, I only have one flashbang left with this group of assaulters, so I'm actually going to put Drummer up front. Yeah. Oh, that's a true believer too. So he has a he could have a vest on. He 100% could have a vest on. Um, I'm going to get some standoff here. I'm glad I checked who it was. We're going to run this one and expect him to come around this corner. Now I've got two HVIs in there, barricaded shooter with their security. No joy, my dudes. No joy. I wish I brought some of those uh, non-lethal grenades that scatters nerds. Um, only one more bang. So my options here are to push with my two assaulters that are committed or reposition combat power. I could reposition these two guys. I could go wide over here, try to give myself a better angle. I don't know how much of a superior angle that would be, frankly. Um, I trust Drummer to take this shot and I trust this bang. So we're going to bang it. I'm going to let Drummer risk it for the biscuit and, uh, and push this after the bang bangs off we're gonna sprint to here and I'm gonna allow him to start shooting at that point point. and he makes it he's now alone and unafraid I'm gonna have him slide the wall there could we do have an injured HVT here and I don't want him to be caught up in this fatal funnel as I'm firing into this pool room um, so we'll go ahead and move this homie up as well maintain security on our two HVTs I really don't like where he's at right now because if yeah he's squirting in there which which sucks because he's barricading himself it makes it a harder tactical problem but it helps because I don't want to have to shoot through that door and kill him uh, in the process Hold it right there. all right we're punching HVTs in the face but we are still clearing uh, <laughs> but they managed to squirt on us um, that heavy gun is gone and there's still some dead space outside so what I think I want to do here is this number pull security on that guy pull security on those guys over there I've got two surrenders that's good I've got to peek outside and check this dead space real quick and there's the QRF they are coming from the south so <laughs> golly I wonder if they're coming from up top too uh, we are about to find out but certainly it looks like capturing the HVIs triggered them uh, and that's what's causing them to do it. I am going to run up here with Minnow and capture this HVI and pull security on this HVI while we do it. I've got a heck of a fight now to deal with down low. Oh, man. I don't want to take... I'd rather kill these dudes with guns as fast as possible um, rather than, like, try to employ a handheld right now. All right, HVI is in custody over there. I'm going to get security again on these HVIs. All right, those dudes are dead. Maintain security there. Reestablish security up top to get rear. He's going to be able to see the majority. Where are you at, buddy? Yeah, he's got a good angle right there. He's going to run to that position. I'm actually happy with Philly's cover right here. So we'll hold it down just like that. These guys have this dude in custody. There's one. And then, oh man, I hate this so much. I need to wait for him to go static. I will slide here. Primary target secured. All right, this dude is going to follow us, so we will bring him right here. Maintaining security on those breaches and the HV at the same time. He is squirting towards this window. So I'm stuck with the dilemma of like, do I step JR up to put a gun at this guy or do I watch this breach knowing that a QRF could be inbound from up top? Um, I'm going to choose to step like that. Freeze. And my boy doesn't give a damn if I say freeze. So now we are on a squirter chase. Let's go, my boy, drummer. I'm actually going to put JR in the building now as well. If I can get through this window, I don't know if I can. It doesn't look like I can. Yeah, I'm not, not able to get through that window. So we'll hold what we got there.
All right, we do have a surrender, but again, he's standing in a fatal funnel. I also have uncleared space up top, so I'm going to post up right here and keep an eye on that uncleared space. While I move to secure this, I'll use JR from external uh, to make sure that my HVI is covered while I work this. I'm also going to step to this side. When we uh, interact with EPWs and we go to arrest people, we try to do it at a perpendicular angle. This allows JR to shoot him in the face if he does anything wrong, and it allows Drummer to then work from the side. That's also going to protect Drummer a little bit from any QRF that could be coming down from up top because our boy JR also has that in his sector of fire, so we'll at least have early warning, if not interdiction, with direct fire. Hands behind your back. All right, two secured. Primary target secured and mission complete. First time looking at this one, guys. It wasn't perfect, but it was a good run. First time that I have done it in quite a while. I'm excited to see what this looks like on replay. Let's check it out. The name of the game is Door Kickers 2. You guys can grab a copy of it from my game store at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. Feels great to be playing this game again. Tune into the channel for more episodes just like this. I'm controlled pairs. This is Door Kickers 2. And I will see you guys in the next one.